gets the edge. Straight away, Donald into the action with a wicket. After the turmoil of the World Cup in England and the sweeping changes at the helm of Sri Lankan cricket that followed, the new order under captain Jaya Saria had been quietly prospering. Test series victories against Australia and Zimbabwe, plus a succession of one-day triumphs, had now elevated Sri Lanka to the second tier of Test nations. The way series in Pakistan, over three matches, would realistically decide the third best team in the world after Australia and South Africa. Sri Lanka had no fears about playing in Pakistan after beating them 2-1 in 1995, but the home side were naturally less optimistic. They'd lost all three tests in Australia, had an inexperienced skipper in Saeed Anwar, Wazim Akram had stepped down, and were missing their fastest bowler, Shoaib Akhtar, through injury. The first test at the Royal Pindi Cricket Stadium began well for the visitors. Jayasriya won the toss, and although the opening stand was worth 44, Saeed Anwar and number three Ama Sahail were both undone by left armour Chiminda Vas. Out, caught behind. In Zamam and Yusuf Yohana added 66 for the fourth wicket with some high quality strokes, particularly through the covers, before Muralitharan claimed his first wicket of a productive series. Arnold taking another catch, this time in the covers. Arnold then snaffled his fourth catch of the innings at second slip as Inzamam on 44 edged a cut shot. Wick Ramasinghe continued his fine spell by dismissing both Khans, Newcap Yunus and Moen, before Murali wrapped the innings up on 182 with the last three wickets. It was a disappointing start for the home supporters. Things got worse for Pakistan when Wazim Akram pulled up lame after two overs, leaving Waka Yunus and Abdur Razak to shoulder the bulk of the workload. Waka managed to see off the top three to catch us behind the wicket, but the key scalp of Aravinda da Silva proved elusive. This is a beautiful stroke from Aravinda da Silva, playing it late and away from the fielder. And that'll go away for four. Struck very, very well by De Silva. Nicely played, and that will give him his 100. That's brilliant batting by Aravinda. Even after Aravinda went for a superb 112, there was a ninth wicket stand of 51 between the left arm quick bowlers Vas and Zoiza, which frustrated Pakistan further. The final total of 353, with Vas unbeaten on 53, left Pakistan at 171 in arrears and a mountain to climb. Saeed Anwar led the recovery from the front, playing with typical grace for 84. He lost Wasti to a brilliant catch by Wick Ramasinghe at deep square leg. And beautifully caught, what a catch! What a my And Inzamam to another stunner from the substitute fielder Chandana at point. Anwar's dismissal to Vas late on the third day was a severe blow. That is a huge wicket. After 31 overs of the fourth day, Pakistan were teetering. Waka, Yuhana, Moen and Razak had all perished and the lead was a mere 65 runs. When Aravinda gave young Yunus Khan a life shortly afterwards, it looked insignificant, but the youngster joined forces with the limping Wazi Makram and revived the innings. And the debutant goes to 50. Well played, young man. Wazim, although restricted in his movement, played a series of powerful drives off the seamers, and as the partnership grew, both he and 22-year-old Yunus were prepared to take on Murali over the top. Straight enough to go for four. Here we go, a big one over the top. The mid-on is not back. Going over the top, and getting hold of it better this time. It looked like the pair would stretch the innings over to the fifth morning. But then Wazim on 79 offered a chance close in and Jayawadina took a sharp catch. Murley's appeal was belatedly rewarded. Nine runs later, Yunus was unlucky to be caught in the covers, vast silly point. But his prodigious innings of 107 had given his side a lead of 219 and an unexpected chance of victory. Sri Lanka's progress towards their target was hampered by more good bowling from Waka Yunus who removed both Atapatu and Arnold to slip catches. When both Aravinda for 21 and Jaya Surya for a patient 56, incidentally his highest score in seven tests as captain, fell to the persevering Razak, there was a real air of excitement around the Pindi Stadium. But Jaya and Ranatunga, who'd both batted well in the first innings for 42 and 49 respectively, again played with confidence, taking the score to 144 for four. 
Then a double blow. Saklane won an appeal for a catch at short leg against Jai Wadina, and soon after, Ranatunga was struck on the hand by a lifter from Waka. The former captain was forced from the field, leaving Sri Lanka more than 70 short and the tail exposed. Pakistani hopes were further encouraged when Vaas and Kalawitarana failed to agree on a run and the left-hander was stranded mid-pitch, 152 for six. Kalu himself was living on borrowed time, surviving a close shout for LBW from Sacklane and then being missed by Wacker at mid-on. With just 43 needed, Razak made another double breakthrough for Pakistan, dismissing the left-handed Zoiza to a good slip catch from Wasti and then bowling Whit Ramasinghe first ball. Suddenly Pakistan were clear favourites, but the reappearance of Rana Tunga was a relief to Sri Lankan supporters. The old warrior was in obvious pain, struggling to keep his bottom hand on the bat, but he was quick to seize on any opportunities to score behind the wicket. As is often the case with Ranatunga, the running was a real liability. Both batsmen rode their luck as poor throws betrayed the fielder's anxiety. Out of the blue, Ranatunga unleashed a glorious square drive off Waka, which brought the winning post in sight, although a pinch single almost spelt the end for Kalu straight afterwards. Could be a run out here. Kalu with the runner, very, very late in taking off. The return is wide. Moments later, it was all over. A square cut off Wacker brought the target down to four, and next ball, Kalu's drive squirted safely wide of slip and beyond the despairing third man fielder. So Sri Lanka had squeezed home by two wickets. The two batsmen hugged in the middle, although for the heroic Ranatunga, his series was over. A compound fracture to the thumb, certain to sideline him for several weeks. Pakistan welcomed back Shoaib Akhtar for the second test at Peshawar, and he was soon in the thick of things. Wazim Akram and Saklane were still unfit, as was keeper Moen Khan, but Shoaib dismissed Jai Sharia for 30, top scorer Atapatu for 75, and three tail-end wickets gave him five for 75, his second five for in tests. Sri Lanka's total was boosted by a late onslaught from Muralitharan, who smashed three fours and a six in his 13 ball innings before becoming Sherb's fifth victim. Oh, what a good shot. He's middled that. Pakistan began their reply promisingly enough. Saeed Anwar was typically fluent, and the 100 came up for the loss of just two wickets. Inzamam escaped a chance in the covers early on, but he and Anwar looked to be gaining the upper hand with some handsome strokes down the ground. In the air, down the ground, and gone all the way. The turning point came in the 59th over, when Anwar, on 74, went for one hit too many off Jaya Surya and lobbed a catch to mid-off. And found the lap of Birlitharan. Anwar's downfall seemed to be a cue for Murali to take centre stage. Yunus Khan, Abdul Razak and Afika Yunus were all snapped up at silly point by Jaya Wadina, whilst Inzamam watched helplessly from the other end. Saklane's replacement, Arshad Khan, was Murali's fourth victim of the innings, and that innings was completed when Wick Ramasinghe lured Sherb into a full stroke. Pakistan had limped to just 199. Inzamam's contribution, 58 not out. Leading by 69, Sri Lanka struggled to consolidate. He's indicating he got a nick on it. They're indebted to a fine knock from Russell Arnold, which provided a spine to the innings. But Pakistan's five bowlers all bowled well, with Waka the best of them. Cracking shot. Big appeal gone. Waka Yunus comes back. At 109 for five, Sri Lanka were definitely struggling. But the fall of Kalu for a third ball duck brought in Aravinda. The 34-year-old maestro was batting down the order with a runner, having strained a muscle in the field. What a stunning shot that was. Flick of the wrists. Arnold had already produced the best shots of the innings, including a majestic pull-off show, and now he moved into overdrive. He's got that through mid-wicket, and that'll run away for four. Aravinda managed a gutsy 31, including four fours, before succumbing to Amal Sahail for the second time in the match. But Arnold continued on his way, with a big six over wide mid-on. Within sight of a deserved third test century, Arnold lost concentration and offered a catch to Silly Point. Yusuf Johanna took the sharp chance and the batsman was on his way for 99. 
It took less than six overs to finish off the tail, and Pakistan were left 294 to win and keep themselves in the series. The innings closes. Their intentions became clear from the outset when Shahid Afridi, the local favourite, walked out with Anwar to open the innings. Afridi could only play one way, and for a while he was successful. We go down the ground, that'll be six, and is... Murley kept his cool, and it wasn't long before he embarrassed Afridi with his flight. Inzamam and Sahail both fell to the close-set field, which put Sri Lanka firmly back on top, a position that was strengthened when Anwar collided with the umpire, Nazir Jr., and injured his neck. Oh, he's rolled over the umpire, Nazir, straight into him. He's up much quicker than is the player. The batsman was clearly worse off than the umpire and left the field for treatment. Realising the fate of the match now rested on his shoulders, Yusuf Johanna embarked upon a daring innings full of extravagant shots. Yunus Khan and Razak came and went, but Johanna found an unexpected ally in the novice wicketkeeper, Atik Uz Zaman, who shared in a free scoring partnership of 63 in 13 overs. Atik down the wicket, driving through extra cover. And it's gone for four. Lovely shot. Johanna was twice missed by Push Pakamara at long on and mid off, both times off an exasperated Murley. And Jai Sharir brought back Vaas to break the partnership. Less than 90 were needed, and Said Anwar had his pads back on when Vaas sneaked one behind Attic's legs for a vital breakthrough. As the light faded, Murley's big turner caught Johanna playing back, and umpire Hampshire upheld what looked an optimistic appeal. When Waka went first ball, the last of the day, Sri Lankan fans could breathe again. Day five was an anti-climax. 72 were needed, but Anwar spooned his second ball to mid on, and the last hope was gone. Murli won another appeal to finish things off, his 10th wicket of the match, and the series was won. Sri Lanka were rightly jubilant. Sri Lanka win by 57 runs as Muralitharan picks up another wicket, his sixth of the innings, and Sri Lanka have won the LG series. The third test took place at the National Stadium Karachi, Pakistan's cricketing citadel. And thanks mainly to some great batting from Inzamam ul Haq, they maintain their proud unbeaten record with a convincing win. Moin Khan returned to the side as captain, with Said Anwar's neck still causing problems, as one of five changes from Peshawar. Sri Lanka were missing both Aravinda and Ranatunga, so returned to the side they'd fielded in Zimbabwe. Pakistan were put in and were given a flamboyant start by Afridi, who smashed 79 from just 92 balls, including 12 fours and a six. A more sedate but equally authoritative 86 from Inzamam allowed the host to reach 256 by the end of the day. Murli again took the bowling honours with four for 89. Sri Lanka's batting had the air of a side that were looking to enjoy themselves at the end of a tough tour. The stroke play was uninhibited and the run rate at times reached five and over. This freedom brought mistakes and all of Pakistan's five bowlers were successful, including new cap Irfan Fazil, who picked up Russell Arnold at slip. The most exciting batting came from little Kalu, who hit nine fours in his 29 ball 42 before running himself out. Sherb cleaned up the hapless Wick Ramasinghe for his fourth duck in five innings to finish with three for 53 and Pakistan led by 29 after first innings. The home side second innings was dominated by Inzamam, who made a majestic 138 and showed at last how Murali could be mastered. Well assisted by Yunus Khan, who made 61 in a stand of 124, Inzamam batted with complete control for most of day three treating seamers and spinners with equal disdain. Beautifully driven. And Zamam al -Haq easily doing it through mid-off this time. A useful 70 from Moen and 39 from Waka put Pakistan in an impregnable position, although the lack of a declaration was puzzling. It didn't matter. Sri Lanka's desire for a long struggle was evidently lacking as none of the main batsmen reached 40. Again, the run rate was around the five over mark, but no partnership lasted even seven overs. Oh, timber all over the place. The winning margin was 222 runs, and it ended Pakistan's run of five successive defeats. But it was Sri Lanka, and particularly 26-wicket Murali, who had most enjoyed 
this enthralling series.